Welcome to Sales Training for Podcasters, the podcast designed to better your sales process. We'll be sharing tools, tips, and techniques, whether you love sales or hate sales. If you've got a product or service to sell and a podcast, you've come to the right place. Now, here's your hosts, podcast strategists, Doug Sandler and JJ Flazanes. So you know is my good buddy, Jeffrey Gittimer. He is here. He is uh, not only a podcast host, but he is a best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author of so many books. Jeffrey, I don't even know where to begin. I have, I have, is this your newest one, the Get Shit Done book? <laughs> you can't see it. Oh, wait a minute. Go live. Turn virtual connections into paying customers. That, talk about timely. I'm assuming that was written between March and today, or was there some, was there some preliminary? That's correct. I, know that is, I had actually begun writing it before the, what is known as the pandemic, which will be known as the, as the uh, great hoax in another year. Um, but I think the, the bottom line is that we are uh, in a period of time where people don't know what to do next because video was an option and virtual was an option up until March of 2020, it is now no longer an option, it's mainstream. And people wake up in the morning and they go on a sales call virtually and I see their unmade bed behind them <laughs> with their closet door behind them. And they're, they're jackasses. They think that it, all that matters is that they're making a human connection, not an impression. Wait, we, ju we just stepped into a whole bunch of stuff. And before we even get to today's oh, current to state, about... of the, I just, I, here's what I want to do. I, I want to, I, I got to have a little setup here because Jeffrey, sure. you and I have, have been able to, to hang out in uh, a few years ago down in Charlotte in your, in your um, I would call it your compound of condos that you have there. Had a Some people to... call it a den of iniquity. I'm glad you call it a compound. <laughs> so I want to I want to start here because what's really interesting, and I'll, I'll go back and talk about this on one of the earlier episodes. But uh, my dad, who you knew um, through mm -hmm. Sandler Sales, you had a, a relationship with him. And what was so cool about it was when I connected with you, probably about three or four years ago, or whenever it was that we originally connect reconnected again. You talked about you. You had the opportunity to give my dad one of his last, um, one of his last interviews, and and then you you proceeded to give me my dad's first first run of his uh, of his book. Uh, you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. How did you even get wrapped up in the entire sales game? And then I want to talk about how you met my dad just really briefly. And then I want to get to all the new stuff now. So how did you even get wrapped up in the sales game to begin with? I started selling in New York City and cold calling in the 1970s. And I made millions of dollars worth of sales in an era where evidently it was difficult to make, but I didn't realize it was difficult. So I just made them mm -hmm. and no one told me yeah. that it was going to be tough. So mm -hmm. I just went ahead. And when I looked up, I realized that I was selling against a bunch of incompetent twits who needed help. So I could either laugh at them or help them. Well, I kind of chose to do both at the beginning, but I, I felt like I could be more helpful to salespeople if I, would, if I began to train them. And I did. And then I started to write and writing changes everything, as you know. Um, I, every penny that I've made since March the 23rd, 1992, which is when I wrote my first column in the Charlotte Business Journal, I can trace back to something that I wrote. So I'm now 17 books into it. Um, the world, you know, is willing to pay me for my wisdom. And uh, sometimes I take less of a paycheck than others. But, you know, I, I'm, you've been to my place. We're very blessed. Uh, and, and I have a good time doing it. I, I'm doing what I love, Doug. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, I, let me just ask I, this though: I, when you when you wrote the Little Red Book of Selling in what twenty two thousand no it, it launched in two thousand and four so I you was had, writing in two thousand two two thousand three did you have any idea that that was going to become the the sales manual of the uh, you know is that even your favorite child or is there other favorite children that you've written since then? But here's the deal: it is definitely my launch book. 
when I took, you know, the book was printed in China, like all books at that time were. When I took the book out of the box, I cried because I knew I had a brand. I knew that I had launched something that nobody else had. Um, I was fortunate enough to have Ray Bard at Bard Press as a, as a publisher. Um, the book came from this. Uh. My friend Mitchell Carney gave me this book 25 years ago for Christmas. And I thought, this is the coolest book I've ever seen. One day, I'll have a book like this. And when he said, Jeffrey, you have to write the little red book of selling. Harvey Pinnock wrote the little red book of golf. I go, I know exactly what it's going to look like. So as you know, I called this publisher to find out where they had it printed. And she goes, well, that's a secret. What a dipshit. So five <laughs> minutes later, I called her back. I called her back and gave her the name of the publisher and told her, please take my name and number off of her. Unless you want to put it on your tombstone, Jeffrey Gittimer called me a jackass. Uh, please don't, please don't ever talk to me again. It's a secret. There's no secrets. What What do you think is the reason? You know, if you had to go back to 2004 when you wrote that book and and mm -hmm. it, it changed the the way that a lot of salespeople look at their at their career. What What do you think it is that people were so attracted to? I mean, I can look at some of the later stuff and say, well, that's easy. It's his no nonsense very common sense approach to no BS selling and you get down into it, especially right. in this, in the latest one, which isn't necessarily a book focused on selling, get shit done no. but productivity, but you, it's the same methodology in that book as, as kind of many of that you've written. So let me throw this at you. There are many, many sales training companies that specialize in manipulation. And I decided that I would write a genuinely non-manipulative relationship building book, not based about how to sell, but rather based on why people buy. Because if I can find out why they buy and you know, only know how to sell, I'm going to beat you every time, every single time. And what happened with the, with this, with the little red book of selling is I write like I talk. So it's a conversational book as you read it. And it's kind of fun. There's cartoons, there's, you know, there's little things in there. I'm busting people's balls. It's, it's a fun book. And people liked it. They, they liked the tactile feeling of it. They liked the size of it. They liked the fact that a ribbon flows through it. And all the little things that you would want in a book, it has. And um, it just kept selling. I mean, we put it in airports. It was 103 straight weeks on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. I mean, it was just, it was a, it was a freak of nature, a phenomenon of its time. And I still get calls from people. I, I just booked a seminar yesterday from some lady who said, you know, I give that little red book out to every one of our salespeople. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's reading that they have to do. They don't, they sit down and talk about it. It's, it's unbelievable. So I've been real blessed with that. It's been um, a charm literally for me, but let me get back to your dad. Your dad was a total pioneer of the live seminar. He was doing live seminars before Tom Hopkins could, um, anyway. And your dad had a strategy and a philosophy that was in his time. It was the 1970s, it was the 19, early 1980s. He had, he had a philosophy and it didn't match mine because he was, he chose to do it a different way, but you had to respect his way because he had a following. He had a crowd. People loved him. He had personality. He had magnetism. And then the people who took over his brand or took over his name chose to go in a direction that tried to keep alive the 1970s strategies and they just weren't working anymore. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't need an upfront contract. I don't need somebody to find the pain. I, I find the pleasure with me. Did I ever try to find your pain? Like, where, where does it hurt? And the answer where it hurts is none of your fucking business where it hurts. It's, it's, this is <laughs> one of those things where you, you try to build a relationship rather than put somebody in a corner. 
Well, in the 70s and the 60s, you could put somebody in a corner and it was okay. That's how sales were made. It's fine. You just can't do it in the 2000s. And the fact that they're still preaching that is just, it's scary to me. And your dad's an icon. Leave that alone. You know, leave, leave the icon, be the icon. And I don't know, I just the real paradox there. JJ, I have no everything parent. I need from this uh, from this interview now. <laughs> I feel, I feel good. good. You can be quiet now, <laughs> and we quiet. can let me take over. Uh, so, Jeffrey, the reason why we started this podcast, Sales Training for Podcasters, was to combine Doug's dad's training and what Doug had learned throughout the years with sort of that's like the sales trainer way of doing things. And I came from a completely different background where I wasn't in sales, so to speak. We're all in sales when you understand that. We're all selling something, whether it be an idea, whether you exchange money or not, we're all selling something all the time. But I want to go back to the 1970s cold calling. What, first of all, what were you selling? And did someone train you to do this? Or was this a natural skill set that you had? I manufactured my own products. My father was a manufacturer. He made kitchen cabinets and countertops. And when I comfortably resigned from his business to start my own business, I made leisure furniture, beanbag chairs in the late sixties. And I would go to New York city with a beanbag, big beanbag over a furry one over my shoulder and find the furniture buyer at Blooming, the Bloomingdale's by taking the freight elevator because I'm resourceful. You know, they wouldn't let you in the front door. So, okay, so where's that, where'd that back door go? So I'd go in the freight elevator and I'd get two questions. Number one is who the hell are you? And number two is how'd you get in here? And so I, I'd sit down with a furniture buyer in Bloomingdale's. I'd plop the thing down. I go, Hey, have you ever sat in a beanbag? The guy goes, no. I said, sit down and see if you like it. He goes, all right. He sits down and he goes, wow, this is really cool. I said, here's the order from him. Just fill her out. And that was my whole pitch. Okay. And so now I, you're making I, a... Go ahead. I sold thousands and thousands of them with, with just, you know, try this out. If you like it, buy it. And if you don't, I got to go. I got shit to do. But in Manhattan. I understand. I lived in New York City. I got it. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a... Where do you live in New York City? Upper East Side. Okay, well, so Upper East Side, let's just talk for just one moment because my wife lived at 85th and 3rd. I was there I had between 2nd and 3rd and 75th and 1st, but yes, I ended up. Okay, so Walk 88, the restaurant Walk 88 at 88th and 3rd is the best pineapple chicken in the world. <laughs> <laughs> So we understand each other. Okay, we got it. We're clear. Hey, we're Jewish. Now, every every Jew thinks about a good meal. <laughs> exactly. Especially now at Christmas. We have That's to figure right. out which Chinese restaurant we're going to eat at. Okay. So um, I'm in New York City and I'm selling on my own. And I I had the gift of gab, but I didn't never understood the science of selling. And I literally sold my business so that I could take sales training and attitude training in what was at the time called multi-level marketing. And I, I studied under Glenn Turner, Dare to be Great. And every day, get this now, from 8 a.m. until noon, for one year, we took a sales training class and an attitude class. Wow. I listened to The Strangest Secret. I watched The Challenge to America. I listened to the greats of their time. And I became a lethal weapon of whatever the process was at that moment of selling. It has morphed, but man, I could, I could kill. And I thought, man, if I ever had a product, oh my God. So I, I left that business and I moved to Florida from New Jersey and my dad and I started a mobile home park. And then a bunch of guys came over and said, hey, let's do this t-shirt factory. And I invested in that. And I went to New York City to sell t-shirts the same way I sold beanbag chairs. And literally millions of dollars worth of t-shirt sales were, were mine just because I, I was cool about it. And I, I had a strategy. I, I had a, you see, this is a, a real close. I walk into some sales place and I'd give my pitch and the guy would always say the same thing. Can you make me a sample? 
I go, sure. Um, if you like the sample, how many will you buy? And wait for an answer. And if you love the sample, how many will you buy? And then I would undo my coat and tie and have their sample on and say, do you like it or do you love it? 100% closing ratio. 100% closing ratio. That's a pretty and good, so that's a good funnel. That have, a good funnel. <laughs> it's, it's solid and fun. I had fun at it. You know, I know I'm going into the sales call. I'm freaking excited because I got this guy over a barrel. He doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. You know exactly what he's going to ask. And, you know, listen, JJ, if you're from New York, you know exactly how those people are. I'm directing to the point. They didn't actually say, who are you? Yeah, right. I, I will tell you that more than 100 people asked me who the fuck I was. <laughs> so it's so easy that it's so easy listening to Jeffrey in terms of if you can easily determine what his relationship with selling is. So we've had two types of people that are on the show, people that love selling Jeffrey and people that hate selling and people that know what you know what the have a system and people that don't plug into a system, but just are, you know, happen to come up, come through with sales. What I love mm -hmm. about I'm very much aligned with you have no issue with you said the word pitch, you've said the word close, you've said the word prospect, you've said the word, you know, all, all the things, you know, shtick or whatever. So it's really funny right. because your relationship with selling is is very much like mine, very old school. And and at the same time, you have no resistance to selling at all. I am one. I, <laughs> I'm a salesman. Yeah. I grew up. A New York City salesman, and my dad was, you know, salesman, and that was in our family. And, you know, I don't know whether how my, my father always referred to himself as a sales warrior and, you know, flying back, doing mergers and acquisitions in his time and airplanes with propellers. And, you know, it was just a, it was a different time. But I want to authenticate something real quick, okay? Just hang for like not 20 seconds. Cool. Using my using my sales strategy and techniques on a sales call, I sold fifty thousand of these to Bill Gaines. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's a it's the a Mad Magazine What Me Worry Alfred E. Newman T shirt. Right. I had a whole pitch. Uh, it's one of the five greatest sales I've ever made. Um, I have Bill Gaines' autograph book. We schmoozed in his office for an hour. I was a subscriber to Mad Magazine for the longest time before I ever went there. Um, I had a whole pitch for what I wanted to do. And he, he came out of his office and was willing to blast me out of there. I showed him the shirt and he goes, get in my office right now. Said, okay, cool. <laughs> well, he had the, like the longest, I think Mad Magazine ran for something like, I don't know, 40 years, 45 years, something crazy like that. It was one of the longest running magazines known to man. And it is a, what a great magazine, but that was cool. Didn't he, he didn't hit you up with any uh, copyright issues or infringement or anything like that. No, he was tough. Guy though. I want to call to attention something for those of you that are listening and are watching. So as I said, we, I kind of represent, even though I'm really good at it. Who are, just so, who are only listening, JJ does have lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> I do and good lighting and my hair is okay. Uh, so come on over to jjfilzanes.tv to check out this video. But one of the things I want you to listen to in what Jeffrey, how he is like, so in the, you are born a salesman. This is who you are. Plus I also know you're an Aquarius. That's a whole nother conversation. But, um, and then the people who aren't naturally born salespeople, when someone sees what they sell as a reflection of who they are, they take it more personally and they have this, and a lot of times it's women, but sometimes it's not always women. Uh, and you, be, the reason why I think one of the reasons why you're, you have been so successful is because you don't give a shit, right? Like, so you, you just sort of are, and you're not looking for approval. You're just looking for, do you want it or not? You're wasting my time. I'm out the door for the next person. There is no, if you say yes, I'll feel good about myself. I'll be excited for your business. But if you say no, it's no skin off my back and I don't care. So there's no attachment to it meaning anything about you. And I think for us on this show, one of the things we want to help people do for those that are afraid of selling is to get over that attachment to whatever they're selling, even if it's an extension of who they are. So you're, I would you know, say, you're New I Yorker. Would say, I would say this, JJ, I want I, I try to engage everyone on a friendly basis because 
all things being equal, people want to do business with their friends. All things being not quite so equal, people still want to do business with their friends. And um, I want to make sure that I'm delivering the value something to the other person. I'm not going to hoodwink them in any way and deliver something crappy that's going to ruin my reputation. If you Google me, you'll come up with 700,000 things and there's no bad ones. And that's another part of my challenge that I want to have the reputation when my kids Google me, they go, well, hey, look, nothing's wrong with daddy. <laughs> Um, so I'm looking at it from that perspective and I want, you're right. I'm not going to take it personally. If someone says no to me, there's a reason why, who knows what the real reason is. People lie to you, you know, um, but the bottom line is I'm not going to go into a funk about this guy said no to me. I'm, I grew up in Philadelphia. Are you kidding me? We boo Santa Claus. So it's not like, <laughs> it's not like something that is going to pop out of the ground and, and, you know, deflate me, I'm going to be okay. I'm, I'm okay with me. And my, I love my kids. I got a great family. I got kids. I got grandkids. I got all girls, four daughters, four granddaughters, a wife and two Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, both girls. Wow. So I'm nothing. There's no male. The, the, You're the, it. The lids, are, the lids are always down on the toilets in our. <laughs> Yay! No kidding. Well, can I ask you though? I know you, we want to jump in here, Doug, but I want to. I want to ask Jeffrey since you know he goes from famous sales trainer in a traditional sense to now you have your own podcast. And since some of the trainers that we're going to be interviewing don't have a podcast, we're just talking about selling. I want to ask you your experience with bringing this onto your podcast and the success of selling on your podcast. I started with a reputation, JJ, and that helps. So people would come onto my podcast because they already knew me. But if a sales professional does not have a podcast, they're a fucking idiot. Because there is no reason for them not to broadcast. So I'm going to give the easiest solution for any salesperson listening going, well, I couldn't have a podcast. Yes, you can. You start a podcast with your iPhone. Oh, it must be three o'clock. Oh, two thirty. It's time to take start, the pill. <laughs> it's time to take the you pill. Start, you start a podcast with your iPhone or your iPad or your laptop, and you invite your best customer as a CEO or a CMO, and you talk to them about the history of their business and why it's successful, and then you share it with them. Who are they going to send it to? Everybody and their dog. So if you have 10 customers, now you have 10 podcast episodes. If you do one a month, now you've got almost a year's supply. This isn't an obvious answer to anybody who's, who's doing a podcast. And I mean, I, I just, I don't understand it. Well, I don't have the time. That's bullshit. I don't have the time either. But somehow I've done, you know, a podcast at least every week, sometimes every day for the, for years. And the content is good. Do I have an outside person editing it? Of course I do. Do we repurpose the content? Of course we do. Do I tweet it out? Do I Instagram it? Of course I do. What do you think? I'm nuts. Well, you know, I don't have the time. You don't need the time. You need a VA. Not a V8. A VA. <laughs> Could have had one. Don't need a VA. You may also need a VA, but why would you, why on earth would you do your own shit? There, there, the woman that I recommended to you, and I probably not fair to drop her name on this, but um, the, we have an outside team that edits and posts. And we have a VA team in the Philippines that's got 50 people in the, in the VA and they do everything. They do everything. It's like scary. They can program in Kajabi. And, and, you know, it, you get help now and the help is, is digital and it's all over the world. And so we start somebody at seven o'clock at night in the Philippines and at seven o'clock the next morning, all of our stuff is delivered. It's scary. One of the things that I, I enjoyed so much about having the conversations that we've had over the years, Jeffrey, is that you do rely heavily upon your team. You know what your zone of genius is. You're in the creative mode. You're in the 35,000 foot approach looking in, in, in the same with Jen. Very, very, but, but not afraid to get into the, into the weeds if you need to. 
but so tell me a little bit about like your process, like how that works. Are you, are you somebody that, that, um, that wants to delegate everything? Do you like to get caught in the weeds? I know it sounds like you, you subcontract out a bunch of the stuff that you do, but how important is it for you to know the stuff that gets done before you actually end up delegating it? Um, I have a Jewish wife <laughs> and she is so detailed, it's scary. So I'm, I have a partner, a genuine partner who understands technology way better than I do. And so I give people their, their zone of genius, their expertise, and leave me to mine. I don't need to know the how, I just need to know it's done. I don't, I don't really, I'm, you know, I'm blessed with the ability to write. So I'm a writer. I'm blessed with the ability to dad, so I'm a dad. And I try to do the things that, that matter most to my, myself and my family. And I'm, I'm in my library. I'm, I'm there every single day now. I don't, I, I'm, I mean, COVID for some people is a curse, but for us, it was a, a rearrangement that needed to take place and it was forced. And, and we took the force as a, as a blessing, not as a, well, you, you know, we had a really tough time. You know, everyone has a tough time. What's your point, dude? You know, show me somebody that hasn't had a tough time unless they're a grocery store selling toilet paper in, a, in, in this era. And I'll show you people that have a, had a tough time. Everyone's had some kind of transition time. So either you, you curse it or you deal with it. And the people who, who curse it, they're now, you know, a waiter at Shoney's or something, wherever they are. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go ca California. Marie Callender's Pies. How about that? <laughs> So, yes. Yes. So, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this from the perspective of, okay, what's now, what's new and what's next. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, 15 years ago, maybe more, I did a program on how to have your best year ever. I pioneered it. And I put together a program that's, I, I looked at it the other day and it's pretty relevant. Doesn't deal a lot in social media, doesn't deal a lot in digital, but everything else is like, woo. So I decided I'm going to launch a program this year called how to have your best decade ever. Why would you want to have a great year when you can have a great decade? And I'll do six figures in sales on how to have your best decade ever. I've already, literally, I put it out on my, on my morning live and we should talk about that because I do a 9.59 a.m. morning live now that's got thousands of people from all over the world. Um, and it's, it's not a replacement for the podcast. It's an enhancement for the podcast. But I launched that kind of a business because I want to stay ahead of who's out there. I, I don't want to, well, how do you compare to blah, 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 blah. I, I don't compare to that guy. The guy's a jackass. I mean, I'm not going to mention names because it wouldn't be fair to them, but you know who they are. They're anybody that does what I do. They're all jackasses. <laughs> I wish I could just be as honest as you and say shit like that all the time because it's kind of how I feel, but I can't really. Well, his entire like world is used to it. His market is totally used to it. I love it. That's what I right. love when I talk to Jeffrey because he, he is a no holds barred kind of guy. And some people very much feel like that affects relationships negatively when you're that way. And I really do feel like that's the best way to be is as open and honest as possible. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's a relationship builder. People want hand signs. <laughs> people want fresh. And, you know, our podcast is rated E. So is ours. <laughs> For Especially everyone. today. For Especially everyone. today. <laughs> For everyone. So big deal. So big deal. Yeah. You know, I'm, I lost political correctness in the 1960s. Let's talk about, Jeffrey. What I've you... used in my seminars for years is um, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton said he never inhaled. I never exhaled. <laughs> and that's the difference. 
when we started today's show, you wanted to talk about, I think, repurposing or you leveraging the content that you have. And, and before you yeah. tell us that story and anyone who's listening, how to do that, I, I just want to share with you that, um, the non-salesperson here who actually is a pretty good salesperson now, but knowing that I came in from a completely different vantage point of feeling weird and selling and I wasn't trained and the whole nine yards. Um, I agree with you that everybody should have a podcast because for this year, uh, this has been my best calendar year so far because I've literally also, I did six figures in six weeks just from my podcast. And that really is cool. again, that is also why we're, we're having the show because people don't understand the power of this relationship over time where I didn't have to have a live event this year. I didn't have to do a email campaign or a joint venture campaign or ads. I literally talked about something for six weeks and boom on, from my show because of the audience, because of the the artist established relationship that I have. So I'm with you on like the leveraging of what works and you were wanting to share something about taking either your podcast episodes and doing things with them. Yes. So this is what I have done up to this point. I'm going to plug myself shamelessly one more time. This book is called go live and it launches in another two weeks. You'll be able to get it at, um, businesses that are going out of business like bookstores <laughs> and amazon <laughs> and amazon is not going out of business no how, how many rule. how many times is that amazon truck in front of your your compound every every, every day? day every, every it's day crazy isn't yeah, it three times a day at least i mean that, that anyway that, they've done it way to go you know wherever you think of the guy i don't really care let's look what he did in the face of people laughing at him and thinking he's nuts. Mm. Anyway, um, the challenge of repurposing content is that if you have a podcast and you have a, a thousand downloads or 2000 downloads, you're missing the rest of social media who might benefit from that two minute blurb or that three minute um, Facebook live post or, the, or, or some kind of archived video on YouTube. What the hell are you thinking? Why would you not spend another 150 or 200 bucks and take the gems of your broadcast and repurpose them and put them other places, which is what we do. However, JJ, it means you have to have some gems. You oh, know, you Jeffrey, can't just... I have a lot of gems. She does. Okay. I've, I've seen them. Some, some of them are, are really nice. <laughs> Those okay, gems. Just... <laughs> okay. But, the challenge, that, the challenge that anybody has as a, as a salesperson is if you don't have self-confidence, if you don't have great self-image, if you don't have, uh, you know, if, if your, your brand doesn't feel good to you, then don't do this yet. You know, grow your balls and then do it. Hi, I'm, I'm Jeffrey. I, I brought my balls with me and I'm going to have a great podcast. And that's where you have to be. And you're going to interview people that you're going to ask intelligent questions to that maybe you send them in advance. But when you do a bunch of them, um, I, you know, Doug has a strategy and his strategy is down to the last oomph. He's, he's got it down because he's done so many of them. And he's had so many people that are dorks that you want to try to do dork elimination by setting up the rules and the, and the, the, the process for the, for the podcast, which I totally respect, but I'm good enough to where you don't have to give me the rules. Just give me the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't get ask you mic. to, we didn't ask you to do any rule to go jump through any hoops to get on this one. <laughs> I'm not going to fill out the form. I, right. I already, I'm the form. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. But you're right. There are a number of people that will fall, fall into door category. No, they're inexperienced, Doug. They're not just, you know, they may not be morons. They may be really smart people. They're just inexperienced. And when you, when you have that, and part of the reason that, that this podcast will do well is because you're trying to help salespeople get to that next level using tools that they're not familiar with, but are powerful. Yeah. You know, the podcast tool is underdone. The, the Facebook live, I'm, I'm, since March the 16th of 2020, I've been live every day on Facebook. Well, what do you think that's done no. for me? I know. Every day, 9.59 a.m. Why did I choose 9.59 a.m.? Because like 10 o'clock is buried. 
Yeah, it's like the 12 and a half rolls of... Uh, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do something that nobody else does. And you would be amazed. You come on to my show one morning and look who fights to be on first. And from, from Norway, from Japan, from Singapore, from Australia, from, from Albania, from Brazil, people, there's 30 countries a day on my show, minimum, minimum, all popping in with stuff from early um, uh, thinkers in, in, in sales and in personal development. They quote Samuel Smiles, or they quote Arson Sweat Martin, or they quote Napoleon Hill, and it's cool. People are are literally re-delivering wisdom on my show every day because they want to. So let's tell yeah, everybody so who's listening to this how to get to your shows. So let's let's first direct them to your podcast, Sell or Die. Okay, Sell or Die podcast, and then about where do they find? Is it on your personal? Facebook page? No, it's on my, it's on my public page, um, facebook.com slash Jeffrey Gittimer. Okay. But, but here's another secret if you want to know. Yes. I use StreamYard. I don't use Facebook. So do we. <laughs> okay. So, but, but most people don't understand the power of StreamYard because now I finally got LinkedIn live. That only took three years. <laughs> um, and I have 29,800 connections. And like 70,000 people, it's nuts. And they wouldn't give me permission. I, I had to find a guy inside LinkedIn who would help me. Isn't that crazy? So are you doing StreamYard simultaneously to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube? And yep. okay. Twitter. Yep. Okay. Well, we're going to put both of those links in the show notes, but I would Thank recommend you. everyone check out Jeffrey's Facebook page and Seller Die podcast. Because again, podcast listeners like to find new podcasts. So hopefully this sales training podcast, you want more sales training, go listen to Seller Die. And where, how did you get this sales training? What was your background? That Me? She's gone through yeah. the school of hard knocks. She's done it all her. It's just amazing to watch her in, in action, in sales action. She just she builds knows like and trust factor like nobody's business. She has thousands of people that listen to her podcast every day. She has a community of inside, you know, people that have stepped a little closer to her. So she has an inner circle um, membership that people join. And those people are basically saying, hey, we want to get a little closer to JJ. And that's the people that tend to take advantage of her higher level offers as well. So cool. she's got a great cool. process in place. Well, just like you said, Jeffrey, I actually, I believe in what I do and I believe in what I sell, which is a lot of times me or advice or books or programs or things that I create. And so because I believe in it and I use it, there are things that work in my life. Like I have no hesitation when someone, but I had to, you know, I had to get here. You know, when I first started, I was a little hesitant because I didn't have people who believed in the things I was talking about. I'd get pushback. I'd get, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not qualified to say that. And, and so I'd have, I'd have to grow my own level of confidence, so to speak, and, and use my own, my own words of wisdom to live life differently. And then it just, I just attracted it. I attracted all the right people that um, have been listening to my show for six years. You know, like, like I have a really long standing relationship with a lot of people. And so they know, mm -hmm. like, and trust me. So I can close a five figure mastermind on a podcast because I don't need to have an event because they've been with me for five years. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Jeffrey. So, um, we'll, we'll talk more about this offline because I, okay. think we just, we're missing some synergy that we should have capitalized on because we're both in the same, um, playground and, um, I don't, our dogs are off leash. I don't know if yours are off leash or not, but we have a condo on the beach and let them run. Um, my wife is a scaredy cat, so she leaves the leash on but lets them run around without her holding it. Like all of a sudden that's like a safety valve. You know what I mean? She'll go and chase the dogs. <laughs> Whatever yeah, steps one needs to take to feel a little more comfortable and a little more comfortable, but I want it. Exactly. So let's wrap up the show so you can go get your dogs. Um, and uh, just make sure everybody knows again, sell or die podcast and mm -hmm. uh, go to Facebook to find Jeffrey Gittimer's well, forward slash Jeffrey Gittimer uh, to watch yeah, his lives. Go to, go to Amazon and look me up that this, um, my latest launch of going live will have a lot of what we talked about. Um, I have a podcast section. I have a, uh, um, a live stream section, a digital marketing section, because that's what's now. 
And you, if you're not out there doing that, dude, you're the Southern expression is you're in deep shit and short cotton. There's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason not to do it. Right. Other than your laziness or whatever the circumstances are, there's, there is, um, there's an opportunity out there and most people are not capitalizing on it. Well, Jeffrey, and, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your, your philosophy, everything you're all about. Love it. Love your no-nonsense approach. I appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll wrap here, but I'm sure we have much more of a future together as, uh, yeah. as, uh, as, as co-conspirators in the world in the sales game. Thanks, Jeffrey, for being on the show. Pleasure. Thanks for listening to Sales Training for Podcasters. To get additional information and to access more amazing content that will boost your sales game, visit salestrainingforpodcasters.com. Hey, do us a favor. Rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Again, thanks for listening.